At the time of the first invasion of the Congo in 1996, mm. William Jefferson Clinton was in power. Yeah. He knew perfectly well what happened in Rwanda in 1994 because the United States overthrew the government of President Juvenal Javier Romano. Mm. And we called it genocide. Those Hutus committed genocide. Yeah. Well, there were Hutu people that did kill Tutsi people. But the genocide that occurred was organized by the United States. Wow. And you don't see this in the, in the news. You get that simple yeah. story. This yeah. is what you call, what they call the narrative of the establishment. And the simple narrative of the establishment is Hutus killed Tutsis, mm. machetes, 100 days of genocide. Javier Amana was shot down, his plane was shot down on April 6, 1994 by the Central Intelligence Agency, the American Intelligence, Intelligence Establishment. Oh my God. The people who pulled the triggers were Rwandan Patriotic Front, Paul Kagame. Yeah. So your number one enemy today is Paul Kagame. Yes. Yes. Number two or number one, you can, you can also call Mr. Museveni number one because they launched the wars against the Congo with the U.S. backing. People ask, how do we help the Congo? One answer I have is boycott tourism in Rwanda. You get people to boycott tourism in Rwanda because it's the second or the third biggest business in Rwanda. But the government of Rwanda is responsible for massacres and atrocities. And instead of being brought up on charges of war crimes, they're invited to the White House to have Christian breakfast dinners, Christian breakfast meetings. Now this is what I call turning politics and turning the world upside down. So we've got to turn it back over, and the way to do that is understanding the key players. Just recently, Rwanda reinvaded the Congo. The Rwanda sent troops into Congo with the permission of Mr. Kabila, and with the support of Mr. Museveni, and with the support of the United Nations. And at this very moment, the United States has sent troops into Eastern Congo. Not many, but they're very specialized troops and they do more damage than a huge contingent of the Congolese army because they're secretive. They're covert operation forces. So the United States is completely behind the war in the Congo. Kabila, Kagame, James Kabarebe in Rwanda, Museveni, they made a deal just recently with the United States. We're going to send troops into Rwanda. Now, this is Mr. Obama. Oh. I don't want to break the news, but I'm going to. This is Mr. Obama, who is at the top and is taking orders from somebody else. And he has to do that. He, he's taking orders from Hillary Clinton. <laughs> he's taking orders from the Democrats. He's taking orders from Walter Kahnstein. How does a man in that position end up as a director of a gold mining company in the eastern Congo, which is, which is flying airplanes in and taking gold out at this very moment. Well, people are dying at the rate of 2,000 people a day. How does that happen? It's called structural violence. The structure itself is inherently violent, inherently malicious, inherently destructive. I call it permanent inequality. Because the media will say, or the NGOs will say, we're here to help the Congo. But if they're there to help the Congo, why aren't they speaking about the gold mining companies that are flying airplanes in, taking the gold out at this very moment, while people are being killed all around? <laughs>
is there no peace in the Congo? There's no peace because we have this war and like when people are dying. People are dying. Her kids are crying and people's well, houses are burned down and people's head is wide open. The shoulders is ill and heads cut off. Oh, that gross. But all those things that happened in the war and so I need you guys to like help us and you see right here right now there's people wearing this kind of shirt that says we that says enough today here now we stand for peace in the Congo and if we wonder if you could show us that stuff that whatever this is chemical right in the Democratic Republic of the Congo now and two of those exclamation but I was wondering if this if you guys are looking at this at church if you won't put this I was wondering please save our country Congo please save our country Congo your cell phone your computer anything electric may actually have something in it that is from the Congo. So every time you turn on your phone, you should think someone may have been raped indirectly because of this. In That's a way. correct. I mean, oh. actually, that thing is called a cotel, just to let you know. The cotel is used yeah. to make your cell phone, your computers, everything yeah. electronic that you're using, just to clarify that. I'm here with Jules Boyele. He's the president of a Congolese community in Southern California. How you doing, Jill? I'm wonderful. Um, this is a fantastic time, actually. Thank you very much, of course, Thank you for coming here. But you're part of the organizer uh, of this demonstration today. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, it's, a, it's going to be a great week because it's going to be Obama's inauguration and all that. Um, what can you say exactly about the situation in Congo, my friend? It is, it is very sad that we are losing our women. We are losing our children. We lost over six million people within five years, and nobody's standing up for the Congolese people. It is our duty as a Congolese to really change the direction of the country, to change the energy, because we don't see much from the government. Mm -hmm. We don't see from, much from the international community. So we, the Congolese people, need to stand. That's the reason we are standing up today. This is a big start. Mm -hmm. We are standing up here, all of the United States, community are standing up, in Canada, in Europe, we are standing up. So. People, they have to know what's going on. They need to get educated mm -hmm. and they need to look at what's going on because people are dying over our mineral. Correct. Absolutely. Correct, correct. Yeah, so. Now, since we, you know, we, we are, I'm from Congo, we are doing this demonstration. Yeah. And you as the president of the Congolese community, Absolutely. what do you expect from this demonstration? What impact do you expect from this demonstration? We expect people to get more aware about what's going on. Are, are we talking about just Congolese people or American people? We're talking about everybody. Okay. We're talking about everybody. Mexican here. Caucasian here, Latino here, um, Asia, everybody. Yeah. everybody. This, is a human, this is a human issue, it's okay. not just Congolese. We all have the right blood. Now, this is Congo today. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was Darfur. Yeah. Uh, this is this uh, Israel and Palestine, you know? So this is a human issue here. Okay. So every human being needs to stand up to make sure that we stop war and genocide yeah. in the Congo. 